So if you're struggling to animate your SVGs, like we have in here, our alien spaceship, taking it from like Figma, an SVG, like a regular SVG into a completely awesomely animated SVG inside of a React application. So in this video, I'm gonna go through how you can actually take an SVG from Figma or any other vector software, export it, the best way to optimize it and import it inside of your React project, plus like converting it into a React component. Finally, animating the whole SVG in here so it looks pretty, pretty sick for your next startup. The same way we did it right over here. So as developers, we all know what SVGs are and we've like interacted with them at some point of our lives. And we all know that SVGs are like scalable vector graphics that stands for SVG. And they're just basically XML based vector images and they are like two dimensional, not 3D or anything. And the bummer thing, they've been actually around like the initial release was in 2001 which is literally more than 20 years ago. But the bummer thing in here and the most shocking part is actually there, I find a lot of developers, newbie web developers, particularly including myself, actually was struggling with like understanding SVG and they always intimidate me and actually give me hard time whenever I, I stumble upon an SVG and I try to like integrate SVG into my application or parse an SVG or animating an SVG. Yes, you heard me right. Animating SVG is sort of complicated. It might seem complicated, but it's actually really, really easy if you use the right tools and you follow the right instruction. So let's imagine we have these two SVGs inside of Figma. I'm here, I'm using Figma and I have these two alien spaceships in here, which are of course in both of them are vector graphics. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and try to take this and actually put it inside of a React application and try to animate it and actually see how we can actually animate, for example, because this is actually a spaceship, right? Because this is an alien spaceship. So we wanna see this like hovering over and we wanna see the power in here or, you know, like when a spaceship puts its line and it tries to pull things up into the spaceship itself. So something like it steals or kind of like kidnapping sort of people or anything. So we're trying to actually also animate in here, like the kidnapping or sort of like the magnetic field in here. I'm gonna call it a magnetic field or a powerful field or something. So we're gonna see how you can do that inside of React. So always, always when you're starting with an SVG, you gotta actually export your SVGs the right way. So for that, before you export an SVG in here, I have two versions of the alien spaceship. The first one in here from the left hand side, I have the spaceship, which is not optimized. So if you look into this one, I actually click on it. This is actually a frame inside of Figma. So if I click in this one, it's actually a spaceship. It's not optimized. Let me see why this is not optimized. If you open that one and actually look into the vectors themselves, as you can see, we see the first vector in here. Uh, second vector is sort of like the, the, you know, the circle that goes around the spaceship to build the spaceship. And I have like two groups in here, one for the power group and the other one for the rest. I mean, it might seem good and everything, but it's really not that good. For any SVG, so you first need to actually name your vectors and you need to put them together, like group them or put them inside of a frame together in order to be able to actually let Figma, so whenever you're exporting the SVG, whenever you put, Figma can actually help you take, you know, the naming on the vectors or basically the frames or the groups and actually put them as IDs on the actual HTML elements or more of like the SVG elements. So for example, this is not optimized. Let me look into the optimized version in the other hand, if you open that one, I have both of them inside of two separate frames. First is actually the ship. The second one is the power in here. So the ship in here, if you open it up, we've got like a bunch of vectors to build the spaceship, which is you know pretty good. So all we need in here, just like to frame this selection to basically get the, you know, the whole ship as together. And you've got like the power in here. If you look into it, it has a bunch of vectors as well. Now, if you go on the right hand side in here, like, let me just select the frame first. So this is actually our, you know, the whole frame that we want to export the whole SVG frame. We go to the right hand side, we go to export, we select the SVG, of course, and we go to those little dots in here to the export settings. And now you have to take ignore overlapping years so you can have like a, a like a transparent background. And the most important part is actually you have to tick and check mark and check the include ID attribute. This actually is going to tell Figma to use the frame names and the group names in here as IDs for the SVG elements. So once you do that, you can actually preview it or whatever and actually go ahead and actually export that. 
Now, if you go inside of your editor, VS Code for us in here, and actually import the SVG we have just exported using Figma, and open that one in, as close as a in here, you're gonna find a lot of paths, a lot of complicated stuff. But what you actually should notice on the G in here stands for a group, so it's actually like grouping a bunch of paths or elements, like SVG elements together. So this clues in here, it actually put the IDs for us. So for example, we have a spaceship. So if you go back to Figma, so you got like the whole frame, which is you know the spaceship itself. Inside of it, there is a ship, and inside of it, there is actually a power. So if you go back in here with the power group in here, which is the child element, so we scroll all the way down in here, and we should find the chip. So let's clues in here on the group. We have our ship in here, and to better make sure that we're actually dealing with the right elements we think we are, and actually Figma did the right job. So if we just go ahead and remove that one, it's crazy, it's gone. If we bring it back, it's here. So actually the first step to do that is actually to export your, your SVGs the right way and make sure you have IDs so you can tell exactly which elements is doing which and what path is actually belonging to what group and yada, 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 because all the paths in here are very, you know, if without an ID, you won't be able to exactly tell which path belongs to which part and where everything. So it's gonna make it a little harder for you to distinguish and actually work with an SVG. By the way, there's actually a VS Code extension that allows you to preview an SVG alongside of it in here. It's called SVG Preview you can download the extension if you ever wondering what's that actually. All right, so the next step in here is actually to take the SVG and actually turn it to a React component. Of course, this is now it's like a .svg, it's an SVG file. You can import it, you could render it inside of your React components and yada, 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 but you cannot actually manipulate that way. You cannot, like you cannot animate the things. You can't, for example, tell it to animate this depending on like, if a prop is in or out, you can hide it in or you can change the background color on click or whatever that that is. So we've got to convert this into a React component so we can add the React reactivity or more of like interaction with JavaScript so we can interact with the SVG and animate it as we want. So here we can just go ahead and actually copy the whole code for the SVG, go back and go to a website called SVGR. So if you like Google search SVGR playground or like SVG to React components, you're gonna take you to this website in here. So this, if you just give it whatever in here, if you give it an SVG, it's gonna output for you a React component. So all you gotta do is just copy that paste button. But there's actually one thing. So you gotta take or tick and check the TypeScript in here if you're using TypeScript and you go all the way down here, make sure you have named export instead of default. I don't, I'm not a big fan of default exports. And if you go to the SVGO config in here, you just remove because sometimes you find a configuration here, just remove and leave like plugins array empty. So you can have IDs in here, like available and still preserved and the output in here. And that should be it actually. So now we can just go ahead copy your component, I don't need that. Again, copy the component, go back in here, and go to my components and actually name the component. So the naming convention is more of like, you name it exactly what the component does. For example, for example, for us, it's actually a spaceship. So we do spaceship and it's better to prepend or append like an SVG at the end in here for a better naming convention for everyone else on the team or either you and in, in the near future to come back to the, you know, the source code and come, oh, this is actually an SVG React component. So you just put .tsx now because I'm using TypeScript and I can just go ahead and paste that one. All right, cool. So let me just go ahead and rename this component real quickly. So I'm gonna do spaceship. All right, cool. Now we have a React component. The next thing in here to make it actually adapting to the container because it's actually an SVG and when you render that one inside of a parent container like a div or something, you want this SVG to take full width and height of the div so you can control it outside, right? So for the best way in here, just go ahead and comment out the width and height and leave the view box because the view box is very important. Just leave the view box and comment out the width and height and that's it. So you just save that one. If you go to the up.tsx in here and actually render the thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and render spaceship SVG. So we go back to my local host in here. There you go. So we got our spaceship in here and the most important part in here, I'm actually controlling the width and height using this, you know, width and height using Tailwind. So if I, for example, I make this like a 20, as clearly as it just like adapts to the container width and height. Now it's actually the time to animate the SVG or the paths or the parts of the actual SVG. So you can basically do this however you want from like CSS to vanilla JavaScript, whatever, like any animation library could work. But of course for React, I would definitely recommend Framer Motion because it's, it's really, really nice and easy to use. Plus it's actually made specifically for React devs. So you can just go to quick start in here, installation, you can just do npm and start frame of motion and you just import the motion in here from the frame of motion library 
and that's it. So I can go back to the side of my SVG in here, like the spaceship SVG. I'm going to scroll down all the way down in here and I'm going to go ahead and find the ship. So I'm going to want to animate the ship. So instead of the G in here for using frame of motion, you got to import the motion. And of course, for importing the motion, you're going to go all the way up in there. So you do import motion from frame of motion. Okay, you go back down there and do motion dot G, which is going to replace, you know, the standard G SVG elements in here. And that's just going to make it work with the frame of motion animation API. All right, that's pretty good. Now, what I actually want to animate and how I want to animate the spaceship in here. So I want to, of course, we all know alien movies and we all watch alien movies and know like alien, how they actually have their spaceships. So I want it to be like hovering around. So we're like the spaceship is top and going like on bottom a little slowly and going back top and bottom, just like really, really slow. Do you know how that actually looks? It's kind of like hovering over. It's not like still, but it's more of like hovering over. I guess that would make it look pretty good. Now I'm going to use, of course, the frame of motion API. And first, we're going to start with the enemy. So the animate in here, you tell telling exactly which property you want to animate. And of course, for hovering, we want to animate the Y property so we can go up and down slowly. So it goes from like minus 40 pixels to zero and back to minus 40 pixels. So we're doing like a, you know, CSS keyframe animation, simple as that. And here for the transition is actually telling how it transitions for that particular animation. So the times in here, you're going to tell it to use a keyframe. So going from like zero one, which is pretty simple for the duration in here, I'm telling it to go for five seconds. Repeat is infinity. Of course, I always want it to be hovering around, never stopping. And the type in here, I want it to be keyframes because by default it uses spring animation, which is not perfectly for us right now. So keyframes is the best one. And for the ease function in here, I want to use ease in and out. So it just goes smooth in and smooth out. Okay, so I'm going to save that one. I'm screen in here, it looks pretty nice. So it's kind of like goes top and bottom really slowly. So it looks like oh, the aliens are like, you know, hovering over the ground. And of course, it's not just about doing Y animation in here or animating the Y position, you can actually basically animate anything from like the scale, for example, to go from zero to one back to zero. If you want to test that one, it's clear, oh, the spaceship is like coming or something and going back. I mean, you can literally do anything as you would animate a normal HTML elements, you would do the same thing for SVG elements. Now, because actually it's a React component and you can control everything using JavaScript or TypeScript. Now, the next thing I want to animate is actually the power in here or, you know, the magnetic field in here. So I want to animate those strips in here, like those lines to go all the way up in here. So it looks like it's pulling something inside of the spaceship. So it would look pretty, pretty sick. So of course, we need to go to the power group in here that we have already, you know, grouped inside of Figma, it's pretty helpful. And each path in here is going to represent a single line. So we got like, I think, nine paths of those so like nine lines. So of course, the simplest way, the simplest approach for the animation, you just you convert this into a motion path, and you put the animate in transition, the same thing we did for you know, the spaceship before, and you can just tell it, oh, animate the Y in here to go from, you know, 1200 to 900 in here, and for a different opacity, of course, and it just like animates pretty well. So if you look into this one, it's actually what the animation looks like, it tries to go up, but it's going to be a little harder when you try to, you know, copy paste for all the lines in here, because we've got to copy paste for all the lines. And if we do it, it's going to look pretty, pretty ugly. So for example, if you copy paste and put it into every single path in here, you go back, this is actually what the animation looks like. It's not really that realistic, it looks a little stupid, because all of them go at the same time, which isn't exactly what we want in. So what we want is actually to have some randomness in between where each line is going up at a different duration compared to the other lines. So this way you can create some variety when you know, the lines is going up and everything. So it looks a little more natural. So instead of doing it that way, I just commented out everything all the motion paths in here, and actually copied all the D paths in here. So like the D property in here, I copied all the values for each one of them for the nine paths, and actually put them inside of an array. So here I named this power paths. And if I go back down below in here, and I did like power paths dot map and actually mapping through every single path. So going through every single path in here, I'm rendering a new motion path and passing the path parameters. So it just matches every single path. I have, you know, fill in here to be one and everything. And now actually I can randomize the list a little bit because I can say the Y it could be, you know, not like good 1200 to minus 900 and opacity is 
same thing. But what I want to randomize is actually the duration for each one. So I'm going to use the index of each element inside of the array. So for the index in here, actually divided by the power lengths or power paths length. So this time it kind of creates some you know randomness and you can have different duration for every single line. And there you go. This is actually the result. And as you see here, the lines looks a little kind of randomized and they're going up in different you know, durations in here, which, which looks pretty more natural compared to the previous way we had it. And it looks pretty, pretty sick. As you see here, every single line, like all of these lines actually coming up from, from this border in here to here and actually having opacity to go zero. I think they are actually going passing up in here as you see, I can I can see them on the top. So you can actually fix that by just making this, you know, 600 or something, and they would actually look pretty good. So if we try to look into this one, yes, it looks absolutely perfect. And now we have our spaceship hovering over and actually doing its magnetic field and kind of like kidnapping uh, on top of this aliens or coming text and whatever. This looks pretty sick. Of course, if you go inside of frame of motion, you're going to find a whole section for doing path animation in here. So if you want to look into how it works and everything, that would be pretty cool as well. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in the next ones.